this video. We're gonna look at radio buttons for Tkinter. Hey guys, John Holder here from Tkinter.com and radio buttons are awesome. They allow you to make a selection from a list of items. Unlike checkboxes where you can make many different selections, radio buttons allow you to only select one item at a time from a list of things. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to create radio buttons. We'll also look at how to grab the information out of them once you click on them, how to do something once you click on them. And I'll even show you how to set them up where you can click a button to make a selection. Very cool and very useful. So before we get started, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, let's learn about radio buttons. Let's head over to our code I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Get Batch Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this intro to TKinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm calling it radios.py. And the first thing we want to do is create a TKinter variable. And TKinter has two different types of special variables, an int var and a string var. So let me say uh, int var and string var. And these are exactly what they sound, an integer variable and a string variable. One holds numbers, whole numbers, the other one holds strings, which is just text. And we need to create one of these because we need to keep track of which radio button gets clicked. And we can do that very easily with a tkinter string var. And these are uh, sort of special variables. We won't get into what they are. We just kind of use them and you don't really need to know a whole lot about them. We'll use them throughout this list and you'll kind of learn as we go along what they're good for. This is one of the things they're good for. So we can call this anything we want. I'm just going to call it var, short for variable. You might call it uh, radio var or let's call it rad var. It's a radio button variable. It's a rad var, right? And this is just going to be a string var, right? So we create that. Now let's create our radio buttons. And there is no like one widget for radio buttons. Every time you want a radio button, you need to create a separate radio button widget. So we're going to have three radio buttons to choose from. We need to create three radio button widgets. So I'm just going to call this radio one. And this is going to be a radio button widget. We want to put it in root as always. And now we can do some things here. We can set the text. So let's create a, a list of pizza toppings. And you're, you know, you need to click which one is your favorite pizza topping or whatever. So the first one will have be pepperoni. Now we need to tell tkinter what variable we're going to use to keep track of these things. So we set the variable to our rad var, right? That's this guy right here. This is going to be a string var. And there's nothing in it yet, but when we click on it, it'll sort of activate it, right? So there we go. Now we also need to give this a value. So what value do we want to create? What do we want to add to this string var whenever somebody selects this radio button? Well, let's give them the value of pepperoni. Now, this needs to be a string because we're putting it into the string var. Another popular way to do this is to use numbers. So forget about this. Say we had this value as one and the next radio button was value two, value three, et cetera. Then you would not use a string var here. Instead, you would use, you guessed it, an int var, right? So we're going to use a string. We're going to make this be pepperoni. So we'll leave it like that. And then finally, let's give this a command. So whenever we click on this radio button, we want something to happen. Well, let's call this just clicked, whatever. And we'll create this function in just a second. So, all right, that looks good. Now let's put this guy on the screen. Let's go radio one dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 40 to push it down the screen 40. But actually, let's make a tuple out of this. Let's put 40 down from the top, which is 40. And let's put 10 underneath because we want to put another radio button underneath it. We don't want it to be 40 down. So we'll do it like that. So, okay, that's pretty much it. So now we can copy this as many times as we want. So if we want three radio buttons, I'm gonna call this one radio two, radio two. This will be radio three, radio three. And now let's have this one say what? Cheese, maybe cheese pizza and have the value be cheese. Same command, right? And let's have this one be mushroom, something like that. I love mushrooms in all things. And have this be mushrooms or mushroom. There we go. So. Okay, that looks good. So now we need this clicked function. So let's come up here and let's create our clicked function. So let's define clicked and we want to do something for now. We'll just pass. So what do we want to do? 
let's just sort of output on the screen what the thing is. So if we click pepperoni, let's just output onto the screen pepperoni or you picked pepperoni or something like that. So let's come down here and create a quick label. That's just going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to be nothing to begin with. And let's also give this a font of like Helvetica size 18, make it nice and big. And then let's my underscore label dat pack, give this a pad Y of 10, push down the screen a little bit. Okay, so now we've got this label. Let's dot config this anytime we click one of the radio buttons. And let's have the text of the label say whatever has been clicked, right? Well, how do we get that? Well, remember, we're gonna, if we click on the pepperoni, we're assigning this string pepperoni into this string var. So radvar will equal pepperoni. So let's output radvar. So we can just go radvar dot get. So this is a tkinter variable. So to access it, we dot get it. It's very much like an entry box where you dot get the entry box, right? So here we could just print that out. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that works. Let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash tkinter.com directory and let's run Python radios.py. And when we do, uh oh, we'll, you see they've all been selected. What's going on here? Well, we'll look at that in a second. But now if we click one of these, boom, it says cheese. If we click mushroom, it, these two get unselected and this one gets selected. And this one does the same thing. So what's going on when they're all selected when the program starts? Well, in order to sort of choose a default one, we need to set it. So let's come down here and let's, well, actually let's underneath our radio buttons. Let's set default radio button. And I usually would make the first item in the list, the default one that's selected, right? So to do that, we just go radvar dot set and then pass in which one we want. So pepperoni. Now this is not this text. It's this value here, right? So if remember I said, you could also use an int var and that would be one. If that was the case, then you would pass in a one with no quotation marks because that's a, an integer. It's a number, right? But we didn't do that. We used a string var so we can just pass in pepperoni. So now if we save this and run it, we see by default pepperoni has been selected. We haven't clicked it yet. So the command hasn't run yet that outputs the thing down here. But if we click one of these, now it says cheese, mushroom, pepperoni. Very, very cool. Now it's kind of silly. We're just outputting the word mushroom on the screen. You could do anything you want with this. Now you have a mechanism for knowing which one has been selected and you could do anything you want. You could run some logic. You know, if they select mushroom, pop up a pop up box that says, we love mushroom too. If they click pepperoni, print out, ooh, pepperoni, you know, whatever you wanted to do you could now do just by writing some logic, some regular Python. So, okay, let's now add a button here. And first, instead of the same pepperoni, let's, let's give it a nice little message, right? Instead, so let's create an F string instead of just printing out the thing. So we can wrap all this in curly brackets, right? And let's say you picked whatever, right? And I think we need an exclamation point after that. <laughs> let's go ahead and save this, run it. I'm just playing right now but this is fun. Okay, so now let's make a button to programmatically make a selection. Instead of actually clicking on one of these, let's say we'll just create a button that says pepperoni and you click on that one and the pepperoni gets selected or whatever. Maybe we'll do cheese, maybe mushroom, whatever. So let's come down here underneath our label and let's create a button. So button. I'm gonna call this my underscore button because I have all the imagination. <laughs> That's a button. We wanna put it in a root, we want the text to say, uh, pick mushroom or select mushroom, something like that. And let's give this a command of, and let's create a function called select or selector, selector, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> whatever. So we'll make that in just a second. For now, let's my underscore button dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of 10, push down screen a little bit. So, okay, now we've got this button. Let's create this function. So let's create button function. And that was selector. Now, what do we want to do? Well, let's set one of the buttons, right? So we already know how to do that. It's just this radvar dot set, right? So we can come up here and go radvar dot set and then pass, pass in mushroom. And that's kind of all there is to it. So if we save this and run it, kind of interesting what will happen if we click cheese, it says you pick cheese. If we click mushroom, it says you pick mushroom and our button is not there. Did we not pack it? Ooh, what's going on there? Uh, oh, my label dot pack. Whoops. 
mybutton.pack. Okay. And like I said, this is going to be a little bit interesting. So if we click cheese, it says you pick cheese, pepperoni, you pick pepperoni, mushroom. Now, when we click select mushroom, mushroom is selected, but it still says you pick pepperoni. Kind of interesting, right? Well, that makes sense, right? We've selected this. We've told it to programmatically do a thing, but that other function didn't run, right? Because all we're doing in our code is dot setting it. Now we could call clicked like that maybe if we wanted to so now if we run this and click this boom it moves it down to mushroom and then it runs that function and it says you picked mushroom as if we had clicked mushroom kind of cool you could do it like that or you can have it do anything you want that's the beauty of this right so those are radio buttons in a nutshell not too complicated very fun and you can do the things to the radio button than you could for regular labels so you can make change the font in the same way that you do for a label play around with it not that complicated but really kind of add something to your app and uh pretty cool okay one more thing we've got these set up to where when you click on the radio button itself it calls this function and does something well maybe you don't want to do that maybe you want to toggle around and do something else with other things in a form you know you might have your name address email whatever and then also radio buttons so when you click the radio button, you don't want you don't want the form to just do something, right? You want to grab whatever's in the radio button later on after you click a button. How do we do that? Well, let's just come down here real quick and just create a second button. So let's go. Actually, let's just copy this and let's call this my underscore button two. And then here, let's say uh, make selection. And here, uh, let's call this uh, make. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. So let's take this function. And let's come up here and let's create it real quick and say make function. And we're going to define make. And for now, we'll pass. Now, what we need to do in this circumstance is we need to come down to our radio buttons and remove all of those commands from each of them, right? So, so now when we actually click on them, nothing happens, but they'll still be selected, right? So now we can, when we Call our make function. Uh, let's say, let's get whatever we posted here. So now in our make function, let's just have it do the same thing that our clicked function did, right? So we can grab whatever has been selected, right, with the radvar dot get, and then we could do something with it. So we'll go ahead and save this. Head back over here. Let's run this guy again. So now when we click on these things, nothing is happening. But let's say we pick mushroom, come down here and say make selection. Boom, it says you pick mushroom. We can still change it to cheese, make selection, and then use this button here to boom, do something. You can still do it that way. But this is just a second way to sort of think about radio buttons. Because like I said, you may have some big form. If you're a pizza company and you have an online ordering system or something and people are placing an order and filling out their name, address, phone number and stuff, and then picking which pizza toppings they want, well, you know, you don't want the form to just submit when they click cheese, right? You want them to finish filling out the form, then click a button and then have it do something. So that's how you do it in that situation. So those are radio buttons. Very cool. In the next video that should pop up right here in a second, I think we'll look at combo boxes, check boxes. They're very similar to radio buttons, except for they're square. And with radio buttons, you can only make one selection. When we click on these things, it's just cheese, right? With combo boxes or check boxes, as they may be called, uh, you can click several of them. So if you want to pick three different types of pizza toppings, you can do that with combo boxes. And like I said, that'll pop up in this video that should be right around there, right around now. And that should be fun. So my name is John Alder from tkinter.com. I'll see you in the next video.